Hello and welcome, and thank you for listening to our podcast, Artist Development. Now, to all you old listeners out there, I thank you very much for coming back and listening to our interviews. And for anyone who is new, thank you for taking the time out and listening to our podcast. Here in our podcast, Artist Development, we tackle different issues regarding the development of an artist. We bring on people on top of their games in the music industry, and we get them to get a better understanding of how they made it and what tips and advice they can give to aspiring young artists. We tackle different issues on songwriting, managing, even social media marketing tips. This week I had the opportunity of sitting down with Kwame Kwaten. Kwame has done it all. He was a musician, a record producer, currently consults in the music industry and is a very successful artist manager. He currently looks after a number of different artists from Laura Mavula to one of our favourite artists Shannon Saunders. He's created his own management company called Ferocious Talent, which comprises of himself and a great team and a roster full of great artists. Our conversation mostly comprised about what he's doing now in management, how he got to where he was as a manager and the different characteristics that make a great manager. So for anyone who wants to understand the world of management, what characteristics are great in a manager and where to find them, this one is for you. All right, so Kwame Kwaten, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Looking over at your bio, it seems like you have had an illustrious career um, over 30 30 years. Am I correct in saying that? I'm having. (laughs) Yes, that's correct. Thank you for the correction. You are having an illustrious career. Um, That's right. (laughs) So from, from your bio, it says that you are a musician, record producer, a manager, and also you dabble in um, music industry as a consultant. And yeah. I, I mean, that's in order. Yeah. I mean, as in, those are all of the things that I've done. And mm. I guess that uh, by doing all of those, it kind of led me to management in the end, I think. Mm-hmm. Now, looking over, I, I did some research. I was, I was quite fascinated at your career. And... Any one of these stems of, of your, your, your titles, I can talk about for like hours. From your musicians, uh, from, from your, your band with uh, D-Influence. Yeah. Um, I, saw, I watched videos of you um, talking with Jules Holland and you had long dreads. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I, I, I read stories about that famous um, moment where you met Shola Armour at the Hammersmith yeah. train station, which mm-hmm. I might add, I think she went to my secondary school. I can't remember. Um, so... But was that in Kilburn or around there? Yes, in Quinton yeah. Keniston. Yeah, that she yes. did. That, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I, it was a long time ago, so I can't remember. Yeah. I don't really remember her. But um, with all of these different strands of your career, and like as you're saying, it led into another. Um, I wanted to talk about you as a manager um, because we actually had a working relationship with one of your artists, Shannon Saunders. Yeah. Um, many years ago, about f- three to four years ago, we we um, reached out to her and wanted to record with her. And to this day, her video is actually our top video for our channel. That was when um, Shannon was had a totally different style, and it was just great to see her develop over the years. So we really support the girl. Oh, that's cool. No, no, uh, I remember her doing it. But yeah, no, definitely, I remember her doing it, and I remember. Um, Thinking actually that it was really well shot. I remember oh, thinking oh. it was really well shot. Yeah, that was good. It was very good. Com- complimented her very well. Well, that's good to hear. I'm, I'm glad that we were a part of her journey, and she's doing amazing stuff right now. So that's great. But enough of Shannon Saunders. Um, let's talk about you. So, as I said, with your with your career and um, the stuff you've done, it's clear to see that you're a very busy guy, and. This is a, this might be a personal question, but I'm going to go straight into it. And it's quite deep. But what drives you to wake up and just do all of this, to hustle hard and to to just go for it? Wow, good question. Um, I t- I think that I think part of it is that you that if you've grown in that way. 
Mm. Then it becomes your way of life. So I don't look at it and think, oh, you know, I'm really on my grind or I'm really, you know, Mm. hustling or I'm really, you know, delving deep into the management barrel or I just look at it very much as um I'm 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 kind of lucky to do what I do you yeah know? I, I'm kind of lucky to do what I do um and 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 enjoy it yeah and live it every day and 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 also I have I have many wins during a day. And my wins outnumber my my losses or my my not so wins. You know. Has there ever been a day where your losses out outnumbered your oh, wins? Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely you get those days. You get those days. You know, I I call them go back to sleep days. When <laughs> literally you're like, you know what? Actually, I would have been better off staying in bed. Yeah. Um. So, and those days they come sometimes and you've just got to get through them and get to the next day. Okay, so... But, uh, but I don't, you know, I don't look at it as, I mean, we are definitely, we work hard. Yeah. Management, uh, ferocious talent, especially, you know, management company, it's, it's, it's a hard working place. No one's sitting on their ass. Mm. Everybody is up and about it and getting on with it and very very busy but but it's a good busy yeah Mm -hmm. and that's what i could see from looking at your career not just the manager side but you were a busy busy guy but at the same time a very hard working guy and that's what i really like to see and really appreciate um and that's great to see you you talked briefly talked about your uh about management and um could you go into how you how you fell into it or how you did you, was it something you pursued or did you fall into it? When I think back, it actually makes sense. You know, I've been in a band. Mm-hmm. So if you look at even before the band, actually I was a, working at a club. I was a, a compare on stage introducing new live bands. And I always say, in fact, when I'm doing lectures, I always say to the pupils, I'll say, look, Actually, if you think about it, I was listening as a compare. I was probably listening to, you know, between two and three thousand bands a year. Wow. So if I was doing that much listening to two and three thousand bands, bearing in mind that I was taking all of, you know, the numbers of the really, really good players, then my my circle of, I guess, influence was growing and growing and growing without mm. me even really realising it. So that was bef- before going in, joining the band. And so it probably led me to make a more informed decision about the type of band that I wanted to be in. Yeah. Which yeah. then led to me being in De-Influence and that being the first sort of band that I made a single decision on. When I say single decision, the other bands I was in before the influence i was in four bands at the same time but i was just really a player in those bands i was never a sort of one of the founding members Mm. whereas with influence it was a founding member thing so i've gone from being in the influence to then becoming a producer in the influence you know as in one of uh, the influence productions or you know and then the influence productions which is finding discovering and then producing talent through to um through to events you know another idea that sprung off of the whole de influence thing was doing the urban music seminar the urban music seminar then went on to become a really really big deal you know yes. from 98 to 2005 so it ends up being sponsored by Jay Z and Damon Dash's company Rockefeller, mm. and then from there, you know, in a way, I was asked by a couple of people. Listen, you know, you know so many people and have done so many work, so much work across all of these fields. So if you look at it, 
putting on live events with the influence and sort of creating vision, which is myself, Andrea and Nikki. And then through to, to being in the band and then producing as well. So I kind of, I knew all of that. So then becoming a manager actually was, I hadn't thought of it, but somebody sort of said, look, you really should be managing acts because you kind of know. And as well as that, when we were working with the production company, we were working uh, a lot of the time, you know, either inside Warner Brothers or inside or with Sony, you know, if you're, you know, producing an act, you know, you're having to communicate all the time with the label, you know? Yeah. So it kind of made sense. I didn't realise it at the time, though. It was, you know, management was the only decision, really, that I, I didn't make. It was made for me. <laughs> but is it something that you wanted to do? I never looked into a crystal ball. It was weird. I never looked into a crystal ball and went, I want to be a manager. Sure. But everything else with your career, you did. Yeah, every other thing. With my career, I did every other thing. I was very much like that. I want to that. I want to do or mm. this. I want that. You know, do this, do that, do this. But I never did with. I, um, I never did with management. With management, it was very much a thing that it just happened. I I found a, a female singer that I just thought, you know what, the world needs to hear this person, and I'm not going to hang around and wait for somebody to get this person a deal. Sure. Because I know what it is about this person. that, And I went ahead, got the person a deal, you know, got them a deal with uh, Blue Note Records, and then started managing them, started looking after them. And, the, and that, was, that was one. Um, and then I, I, I kind of had my first two to three years actually w- were not successful at all. Yeah. You know, you know, I had two, three years kind of in the wilderness really. And then I, I stumble, uh, you know, I weirdly social media plays a little part and it's very modern, the space of part in it, you know, I come across, uh, I, I have a thing called question of the day that I do every day on my mm-hmm. Facebook. And uh, I was on question 90 or 94. I can't remember which one. And uh, I posted, you know, who is the most underrated person that you know? And two different people replied back to me and said, hey, there's this girl that you really need to check out. In fact, one of the guys that replied said to me, it was a one guy and there was one girl. And the guy says to me, he says, listen, he said, you need to manage this girl. Hmm. And, uh, and weirdly, he was the guy that had employed me to work as a compare back in the day. <laughs> so he just said, look, you need to... And I was like, all right, uh, okay, fine. Didn't really think much of it. Followed my nose, found the link to this girl, and that girl was rumour. Wow. And, um, you know, uh, the rest, as they say, is history. You know? yeah. um, so you briefly talked about your unsuccessful years um, for those two, three years that you were starting. Yeah. Now, there must have been many, many a mistake that you've made, many mistakes that you made um, along those two, along those, uh, that two to three years. Could you yeah. um, explain any of them? And did you, did you learn from any of those mis- mistakes? Oh, yeah, yeah, still to this day. Even if I make a mistake now, I'm still learning. I know it sounds very cliched, but it's true. But what, what kind of mistake are you making now when you're, uh, you're running such a successful Oh, man. Listen, the music game changes the whole time. You mm. never fully know it. But in a way, that's why it's kind of like a Rubik's Cube whose colours change the whole time. Wow. You know, so you can't even, you know, when somebody, to me, when a manager says, oh, yeah, I know, I know how it works. I always think to myself, well, you're lost, mate, because you can't know how it works. Because the music business, I mean, three years ago, I don't even think Beats Music was here three years ago, Yeah, right? very true. So, you know, and then five years ago, was Spotify as important as it is today? Yeah. You know, so who, so, you know, if you're, that means if you're a manager eight years ago and you thought you knew the business, you come into it and you, and you, maybe you retired because you thought you knew it all. Mm-hmm. If you came back into it now, literally, you'd have a completely different means of distribution. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so true. And so, so, I, so that's what I love about it. That's with, what, you know, that's why I said, you know, of course you're going to make mistakes. 
because you can never know because the music is changing all the time. Yeah. All the time. And with the ever changing face of the music industry, how do you yourself keep up to date with it? Um, change or die. Sure. You know, you, you, you adapt or die. Yeah. It really is like, um, the evolution of the species as far as I'm concerned with management. Wow. That's a great way in seeing it. If you, if you are not prepared to accept new methods, new ways of working things, new insights and insights from people that are going to be younger than than you, Mm. then you best seriously lie down in your bed and stay there because, (laughs) because seriously, that's what it's like now. Yeah. And in a way, that's really that's what keeps it fresh. It's what keeps it exciting. But the lucky thing, I guess, if you've if you've managed people for a while, you can take what you know already, and then have added to it this new sure. kind of thinking and this new way and these new ways of looking at things. And uh, you know, for me, I can only be excited by it. You know. No, that's that's great. It's it's good to to always have something new. You don't want to have that monotonous lifestyle and you're just doing project after project. But in this case, with the music industry, because it's always changing, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, in management, I don't know much about management, and it's always intrigued me, and I've always wanted to know how much control do you have over an artist. I, to me, I don't. I you. I look at it as you're a partner with the artist in their career. Sure. I don't think the whole thing about control. It's like, nah, that's not. That's not it. You know, if an artist, if you, if it's going well with you and, uh, and an artist, I think that sometimes they're going to agree with some of your suggestions. Other times they're not. Other times you're going to agree with their suggestions. Other times you're not. Yeah. And I think that that all of that push and pull is what creates the dynamic that makes the arrow move in a forwardly direction. Yeah. What happens when you get to um, an occasion where both of you are pushing and pulling and just no one is moving and you're just not moving anywhere? Oh, I think think, uh, with an artist, you know, I think you, you have to look at it as the last call to me is 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 always theirs sure you know it's their career yeah so the last call is always theirs all you can do is say look this is this is what i think you know the last call is theirs definitely Um, okay yeah that's great insight yeah i think that's fair enough yeah so um as you know oh you may not know but with reload sessions we um we support a lot of upcoming artists and a lot of these upcoming independent artists don't know where to find management or how to find it or if one particular manager is better than the other. What advice could you give to a, just someone who's brand new and he's, he's, he or she is seeking advice about management? What's the best advice you can give them? Seeking advice about management. Um... First off, do they need a manager? Wow, this is very, really interesting. What did what did he say? What is was the guy? Peter Harris. <laughs> he said once. He said at one of our seminars in 1999 or 1999, yeah, or 2000. He said, first of all, he said. Don't hire one of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great piece of advice. <laughs> So seeking you, so seeking a manager. Don't hire one of your friends. And then he said, second of all, don't get your family involved. <laughs> <laughs> so you you fully agree? Well, I think that if your family have never been in the business, I think, and you, they're going to become your manager, I think that that could be tricky. Sure. Sure. I think if they've been in the business and they've got loads of experience, then I think it's different. Um, but I would say managerially, um, wow, advice for people looking for management. I would say look for people that really, really understand your music, number one. Hmm. 
Number two, they've got to be people that talk about your music outside of hours. So when I say say outside of hours, I mean at the time where you most or you least expect them to be talking about it, if they're getting you wins in areas that you wouldn't have expected, to me, somewhere along the line, that's quite a good sign. Yeah, no, that's... uh, I think think having um, a person that is prepared to adapt is, is very important. I think thinking laterally my friend jamie bins has a management company called lateral management and i've always thought it was a brilliant name so i think thinking laterally is really important mm. you know being able to kind of go oh hold on i look that i look over here and i see this hold on let me turn my head mm. oh i can see that too. Oh, hold on let me turn my head oh right i can see that too. okay you know so i think that that is also really important um I think that being okay with somebody that d- disagrees with you, I think is really important. Yeah, I agree so that, that thing of, you know what, I think this, you think that. And because you think that and I don't agree with that, that's okay. Mm. I think is also really important. Um. I think experience is important. I do think experience is important. And I think choosing somebody that knows how to act in front of people is also really important. Yeah, people skills is a big thing. Listen, you know, you you know, I think as manage, managers, you know, you've got to walk into a room and be able to blend at the right time, stick out at the right time, give your opinion at the right time right time hush your mouth at the right time and you need people that you know understand that women men that understand that you know definitely i also think never be afraid this is a weird one is juxtapose you know the 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 whole the whole um i i guess experience thing is do not be afraid of a newcomer that has energy mm. is another thing. So, because a newcomer that has energy can always join forces with an experienced pair of hands. Yeah, mm. in a way, it kind of rejuvenates the the whole the whole thing. Yeah. Um, cool. So these traits and these characteristics of that manager, that perfect manager. So you say. Um, where do you find this person? Um, you know, they're under rocks. You just have to turn <laughs> enough rocks up to find them. But yeah, they're there. They are. They're there. That's interesting. You know, they're a, they're a, they're a good they're a good managers. There are there are good managers around. I come across quite a few in the uh, MMF music managers forum. I, I think is you know there's oh, okay. there's there's quite a few in there. You know where where. Uh, MMF members where I sit there and I think to myself, you know what, these, these, there's some really, really smart switch on people, you know, uh, uh, who was I sat with the other, the other day on one of those board meetings, uh, uh, the, the Mumford and Sons manager. And I remember thinking that's one, he's one smart switched on cookie. Mm. Um, um, who was I? The other, I think, Skepta's management, Grace. I remember thinking to myself, I only met her briefly, I think. Uh, and I remember thinking, she's one smart, very, very switched on person. You know, a uh, Zion. Uh, oh, Zion's from, great, yeah. From, from renowned. I remember, again, as soon as I met that guy, I remember thinking to myself, you know what? This guy, psh, he's like, he's going to be running things in four years. He's yeah. just i remember I, I don't know if i'm right in saying but zeon was in the list for like 30 under 30 um influential yeah. people in the music industry and and he was on that list yeah he's very 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 good and uh him um richard antu's passed away i remember thinking him oh 
again, a real loss to the industry at such a young age. Hmm. Now, but, uh, but just remember thinking him when I'm him, phew, amazing, just an incredible, incredible human being, you know. So they're around, they're yeah. definitely around. Jamie just, Bins, Jamie Bins from, from Lateral, as I said, yes, as well. He's he's incredible, you know. Um, Joey Scorbrick, he's an amazing one as well. He looks after Rizzle Kicks, he's an oh, incredible okay. one. Um, there's a whole but Toby Donnelly. He looks after, um, who does he look after? I think he used to look after Mika Chu, looks after uh, Kate, the poet he looks after. Okay. Uh, um, who else has he got? Oh, he'll come to me in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's in my, Toby Donnelly's amazing. He's very, very, very good. So it's it's a case of you you got to really just look for yourself and then um, you know maybe that that forum you were talking about and then you can find some. Yeah, Tim and Danny, from uh, what are they? They uh, Stargates Management. They're amazing, amazing management. Yeah. Now, when you, when you give a list of all of these amazing management, are, do they all encompass all of those traits that you were just talking about? Or is it certain things that everyone has different things? I think some people might have more of a leaning of one than another. But sure. I think I just think generally, I think they're, they're on, you know, that they have a lot of those traits. You know, they're uh, Martha Kin. There's another one. There's a few. There's quite a few. Yeah, know. I mean, it's quite a few, honestly. It's quite it's a few. just in a few minutes, you've named me like a, 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 a handful. So, yeah, yeah, so for any um, aspiring artists out there, it's just there are a lot of them. So you just have to go look for them. Yeah. So a lot of artists, um, upcoming artists, tend to focus on the creative side of the music industry, but they don't focus on the business side of it. Um, and them as a brand... I, I would always say that um, focus on your brand because you you know you are you are your own business in a sense, um, and do you agree with that saying? No, really, I, no, because I I actually think that, you know the brand doesn't come without the the actual content being correct. Sure. So to me, focus on your content. Interesting. Oh, yeah, and, I was, and it will lead to what your brand is. That's interesting. No, I, I, I totally agree with that too. I'm forever telling people, people, it, this is the interesting thing about being a consultant as well for people. Because mm. I'm forever telling people, look, you know, uh, if you're coming to me as a consultant, you know, ferocious consultants, if you're coming to me as a consultant and you are, you are expecting to be coming to see me for a very, very long time. I'm not doing my job. Mm. You should be seeing me a maximum of three times, and then past there, you should totally have it sussed. Wow. I said, you should, and, and, you, and my worth, I said, me, how my, because my, I don't advertise, I said, so how my word of mouth happens with my consultancy is, is that I'm good at what I do. I tell you the right things, and... By the time you've been for your second consultancy, you're like, do you know what? I've totally got it. He's, yeah. he's led me in the right direction. I don't need him anymore. And what you do is, is you walk off and you tell 10, 10 other people. And then yeah. they come back and see me. And then that's how it works. You wow. Know? Well, great piece of advice there. Um, I wanted to talk, you, you briefly talked about your networking events. And um, the, am I right? You were the co-founder of Creating Vision, which Absolutely. is now yeah. the um, ultimate seminar. Absolutely, yeah. Creative I, vision, yeah, yeah. And I remember signing up to uh, the ultimate seminar because um, I wanted to see what was what um, what events were coming up. You have you had one with um, a female one. Am I correct in saying? Yeah, female uh, networking. And Definitely. Jackie was holding it. I've met her briefly. Yeah, so you had Jackie. I think who else? Rachel as well, and Jessica from Raw. Ah, Hello. brilliant. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, those really started up because, um, firstly, Nikki, Andrea, me thought it was a really good idea. Um, but we just noticed 
the the way that um, if you have an all female networking sort of power meet, as it were, mm. you know, almost like the subjects are spoken about are not just different, but the way that they're spoken about is different. And I can't tell you how different that is because I ban myself from those meets. Of course. It's an all-girls one, right? Totally, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm fully respectful of that and I'll, I ban myself from it. So I'll go, I'll do the introduction, say hi to everybody and then basically say bye, sure. you know, and, and sure. they'll get on with it. But I think that that's... And I think they're needed as well. I think yeah. that they're as, as I think they're the one of the most oversubscribed of our master classes that we do, yeah. music surgeries that we do. They're the most. I mean, we'll post for one of those. Yeah, and, and, and it kicks off. I mean, it's 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 done in maybe two and a half hours. It'll be, it'll be full, and oversubscribed maybe by about I don't know. 100 or 200 or something stupid. Yeah, I love the concept of a, a networking event because I, I just don't think there are enough music network events out there. Yeah, no, definitely. And well, how, yeah, go on. And how did you actually get it, um, get it started? Because it's grown to become this massive thing. Yeah, I think um, the seminar, the thing about the seminar is we know how to do them. Mm. We know how to do them because we've been doing them since 1997. So, you know, the first urban music seminar was in 97. They then went on to 2005 and then we stopped, broke for four years while I guess people brought up their kids and the like and sure. had a break. And then we started again in 2010. And here we are six years on. And, and, and But we, we knew from the, doing them the first time that there's a real big need for um, seminars that that were maybe a bit sort of rogue and different from the the sort of normal industry seminars. Mm -hmm. We're not a kind of pat me on the back organisation. We're very much kind of driven by what our participants, attendees, want you know at the end of each seminar there's a, a paper passed around or, uh, and people list what they would like to see more of next year and we take notice of that and mm. I think we're also driven by new creative new creatives new creatives that are hot you know so you know if you came to the seminar two years ago you would have seen a younger Stormzy sat on a a uh, uh, on one of the panels and you probably would have met him after the seminar as well and he would have just had a chat with you and the rest of it and yeah you know a year after that you would have seen a, a young a younger jimmy napes sat you know on a panel yeah talking about you know his songwriting and the rest of it and, and then maybe six months later you would have seen him at the at the grammys picking up yeah a Grammy it's amazing for, you know so a, a lot of the time we're on to people early you know, there's still early footage. Actually, if you put in Kanye West Urban Music Seminar, there's still early footage of the um, young... No way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm definitely going to check that you, out. You could look at it. There's a younger Kanye West sat there talking. Uh, and what we did was is we got all a, a bunch of our um, attendees to ask questions of, of, of this new young... Uh, producer that we figured might go on and do well mm. and he sat there answering all of these questions you know well i would definitely want to go to your, um your next uh, next seminar because um i i love the idea of networking and and talking with like-minded people and it's like... november november the uh, november it's yes always, it's always in november brilliant yeah. well i'm looking forward to it i'll, I'll definitely sign up to the to the next one yeah. Um, Kwame, I know you're a busy man, so I'm going to leave you in a bit. But I just want to ask you one last question. Um, if we, I interviewed a, another person of my, uh, a friend of, of ours, and she she runs a YouTube channel which has like quarter of a million subscribers, and she's a like a 
she does music and also blogs, uh, vlogs her, her life as well. And I wanted to interview her because I, I, I talked to her and said, hey, look, I, I want to interview successful artists. And she goes, she turned around to me and said, oh, that's funny because I don't see myself as a successful artist. Mm, mm. And I thought, that's so strange from the outside looking in. You, you have all of these numbers, you have a following, you have that fan base. Yeah. Surely you are a successful artist. Mm. Um, for a manager as yourself dealing with a lot of artists, you know, who we see as successful, what yeah. do you see as a successful artist? Wow. Um, somebody that, that has got a career that's not here today, gone tomorrow. Mm. Somebody whose career can sustain them eating and living. Um, somebody that enjoys in somebody that enjoys and understands and, and and is also is grateful for what they do and the gift of what they do yeah um because i don't think you can see success if you are not grateful for it definitely so I think that all of those things become really, really important. Um, and and somebody who, you know, career-wise, there's some kind of arc of growth, you know, mm. in there. You know, some kind of, somewhere where you can see, all right, okay, started here, went from here to here, went from here to here, it gets more excited, here to here gets more excited. And even in the times where it started to slope off, mm. it's still about their business and, 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 and probably, you know, because the lean times help you plan for the good times. Yeah, that's, that's so true. So, yeah, that's, 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 uh, and also the other thing I think with successful artists is for them never to be satisfied, inevitably, actually. <laughs> <laughs> As in never to be satisfied with their lot because they're always kind of looking for whatever the next thing is. Yeah. You know. Um, well, they're great answers, Kwame. They're, that was um, a great insight to, to someone who's managing a lot of successful artists. Kwame, thank you very much for your time. It means a lot to me, especially from a busy guy like you. So um, thank you again. All good, man. No worries. All good. You take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And so there you have it. That was the interview I had with Kwame. I hope that gave you some great insight into the world of management. For those of you who are interested in the notes of this podcast, you can find them over on our website at reloadsessions.com. If you enjoyed this week's podcast, why not let us know? Send us a tweet over at Reload Sessions or even just send us an email. It would be nice to hear your feedback. Thanks again for listening, guys. I'll see you on the next one.